Alright guys, this is a long plane review for Airwolf 2 on the Amstrad CPC, released by Lead Systems in 1987. Now who here remembers that episode of Airwolf, the TV show, where Stringfellow Hawk goes into space to destroy killer balls? No? Anyone? Ah, okay then. Just another license slapped on a game that has nothing to do with the source material then. Hmm. Well, first off, this game didn't actually get a full price release on its own, instead appearing on a compilation called Trio from Hitpack, a subsidiary of Elite, along with two other previously unreleased games, 3DC and most notably Great Gurionis. If you look closely, Airwolf 2 has different art here as well. Anyway, it seems Elite deemed each of these games not good enough for a full price release on their own, so bugged them all on this compilation, which is odd considering the money they would have had to pay for licenses here, because Airwolf is of course a TV show, and Great Gurionis is an arcade license from Taito. Secondly, this game is most notable and famous for its excellent jingles of music throughout, and you can find on YouTube many people doing cover versions of said theme. So well worth checking that out after this review, guys. And anyway, here we go, let's kick the game off and see what we're in for. The first game was bloody dreadful and a bug-ridden, unfinishable mess. Let's see what Airwolf 2 is like, with a very nice loading screen there, very nice indeed. And here we are on the title screen. Nice, um, nice title screen music here. Um, so you can see here the programmer was Neil Latarche. Uh, we featured him recently on the channel because he did the Uridium conversion that similarly never got a full price release on its own on the Amstrad. And we did a long plane review of that a few weeks ago. He also did Hopping Mad for Elite and Metropolis for the Powerhouse. And that's it for uh, Neil. Um, so he also handled this conversion to the Specky and it shows. And we will see this very shortly guys that this is a Specky port. The sad thing here guys, given all the excellent music, which we're going to hear more of in a bit, I cannot find out who the musician is of this. Maybe there's some hints of the names in the high score table there, maybe, but um, I'd rather not try and guess. But if anyone knows, please let me know in the comments below in the video. Um, so the trio compilation where this game first appeared on uh, was released around about August 1987 for the Specky and maybe September, October time for the Amstrad as best I could find out. Mm. And on the uh, Encore budget re-release, which is the budget label of uh, Elite, which you saw the box art for first in this video, um, the back of the box lists the following game features. Realistic helicopter flight control, frantic battle action with alien starships, compulsive gameplay and multiple scrolling levels. Mm. And it also has a Commodore 64 screenshot for what is labelled the Amstrad one as well. <laughs> anyway, realistic helicopter flight control. Yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> There's nothing realistic about the flight control here of this helicopter. There's no gravity or anything like that. In fact, he's flying um, a helicopter in space, guys. Like, can anyone... Um, explain to me how that's going to work. <laughs> anyway, um, the story in the game from the manual. Stringfellow Hawk, along with his super new helicopter Airwolf 2, <laughs> right, okay, um, has been given a mission to destroy an alien craft which is threatening civilization. By collecting and using sophisticated new weaponry, you must overcome the many perils facing you along the route and more importantly, destroy the craft. And that's it! There's literally nothing else in the instructions there. Or anything else about uh, the story or what's going on. Yes, okay. And there are weapon pickups in the game and speed ups and stuff. Uh, but you have to press the copy key on the Amstrad to select them, so bear that in mind. Okay, I think it's time we kick things off here. And off we go! We have a um, horizontally scrolling um, shoot 'em up, basically. Uh, but this one's a little bit um, different to the others because it's scrolling to the left rather than to the right. Just to be different. So that was a pick up there, the little wibbly wobbly um, thing we picked up. So currently we have active the little space shuttle icon there in the, in the uh, heads up display. 
Oh, that's a speed pickup, and that's we've and we've just activated it. Right, I'll talk more about the pickups in a little bit. So we've got the speed pickup activated, which means we can move around the screen a lot quicker. Oh god, the, wall, the columns and walls to blast through that that brings up bad brings back bad memories of Airwolf One. There's another weapon pick up there. So that's a smart bomb. That's your standby. So you need to press the copy key on the Amstrad to use it. But we'll save it now. It's got to avoid these dreaded turrets. You never know when they're going to fire these things. So I'll just try and get through as quick as quickly as I can. X2. That fires as double double power on the weapon. Oh, here's the excellent music. The famous Airwolf 2 music. I let you guys listen to it for a bit. This music, and this is the this is the music that you will find covered on uh, various YouTube videos. And it's a really nice touch. It just random. This jingle just randomly appears in the game, and uh, will reappear later on as well at various points. So this took me by surprise as a kid when the music appeared. Weirdly kind of doesn't really fit with Airwolf, but kind of does in a kind of a space shoot em up, really. Mm. This probably gives us a clue here that, that, that this was probably a different sort of like horizontally scrolling space shoot em up that um, basically had a sprite shot, uh, a sprite swap on the main uh, sprite there from like probably a spaceship to an, like an Airwolf helicopter. And uh, Leap bunged it out as, a, an, a, as an Airwolf game. Otherwise, where's the famous Airwolf theme music? And we actually got it in the first Airwolf game. It's probably about the best thing about that bloody uh, game. There we go. And that's the end of the tune, but it will come back a little bit later on. But we actually have some really uh, decent sound effects here, actually, as well. Um, so it's quite good. <laughs> now this is where things start to get a bit tougher. You'll notice that like the um, uh, color cycles throughout the game as well. So we've got kind of we do have monochrome graphics, but we do change between different colors at some point. But yeah, guys, clearly a, a specky port. Very clearly a specky port. <laughs> And I think I, I definitely owned this game as a kid, and I quite enjoyed it. I think I really like li like listening to the music there, actually. But this is pretty much about as far as I got as a kid. Oh, that's the laser weapon there that we just made active. So you can choose to activate a pickup whenever you want to. So the current weapon you picked up but haven't used yet will be in the standby window in the top hood there. And there you go. That that standby will just return us back to basically the normal helicopter, like normal speed, normal weapon. So we don't want to use that pickup. There's a couple of wibbly wobbly uh, things, <laughs> weapon pickups there. Smart bomb, speed up, which we've already got. Um, so the most useful ones are you want the speed up, you want the laser weapon, and you want to have a shield picked up ready to use in certain sections. Yeah. We really need the shield here because this, these lightning strikes are an absolute nightmare. They're, they're completely random and almost impossible to predict. And sometimes it kind of, I wouldn't say it glitches, but the lightning just keeps happening over and over and over and over and over without a gap in between sometimes, which means like, yeah, you're going to end up losing a life. So I was a bit lucky there. 
but if you had a shield pickup, hold on to it. That's the shield pickup. So we're going to try and hold on to that for as long as possible until we get in a sticky situation or we have another area where there's lightning strikes happen. I think I might mistakenly use this too early, actually, the shield pickup I've currently got. Obviously, avoid the scenery. That will um, destroy your um, air wolf. And yeah, I, I mean the graphics are quite detailed, but it's basically monochrome, two colours. Um, I've used the shield here, I panicked, I, I should have held on to it. And you can see there, it will temporarily protect me. It doesn't last too long though. But there is a, couple of little, a bit of a tough section there, so... Um, yeah, the graphics are quite detailed. They are a bit, they are a bit simplistic though. Being in mode one, we can have the smaller pixels and therefore a little bit more detail. Um, but I always kind of preferred mode naught where possible. Oh, we got a color change there to signify like a new section and area of the game. I think what I found out later on, I mean, I just, I didn't really need to use that pickup there. If you hold on to a, a pickup and pick up the next one, you don't get the shield. The more you pick up without using them, the more likely the shield will spawn or the laser. So if you've got a pickup that you don't want to use, just hold on to it. Or like if you've got a smart bomb, because um, we don't want to use the current pickup, that will return us to our normal speed and normal weapon. Uh, but if I picked up a smart bomb, for example, don't just use it for the sake of it. Pick up the next um, weapon pickup, and you're more likely um, get given a higher tier weapon, like the laser or the uh, shield. That's my point, anyway. Uh, but yeah, pretty decent music. We get a different sound effect for the laser here than the normal weapon, which is kind of cool. I like the laser weapon, how the lines sort of go across the screen there. That looks pretty nice. Um, obviously, not uh, with, yeah, not protected from those things dropping through. They actually go through the scenery, like enemies and enemy bullets and all that kind of stuff. So uh, you're not protected by going uh, on that uh, lower route there. That's worth bearing in mind. Ah, there we go. We've got the shield pick up. Towards the end of the section, just what? I should have uh, not used the shield there. To be honest, guys, but I'm always worried about the turrets just randomly firing when you're going over them. Okay. We're good. Oh, and the music reappears, especially when it gets to this sort of like little tunnel section. That's where the music tends to reappear. Ooh, we've got some um, animated uh, background graphics there. And we do it at points, get a vertical scroll on the go. But as you determine, you can see you move up and down, but it actually wraps around the top of the screen to the bottom. So look at the explosions there, guys. You can see they wrap around. So there's actually a very limited plane area there for the vertical scroll. And it seems rather pointless they've actually got a vertical scroll on the go there. See? It's just the same area. There's no <laughs> you're just choosing the same thing to go through. Um, so a bit pointless that, but I suppose it's a nice touch. Um okay. Um What uh, what are we gonna be expecting here? Okay, there is a there's two bosses in the game. A kind of like a mid-level boss and then an end boss. Um and there is an ending to this game. Most people kind of assume that this like will just like loop forever. No, there is actually uh, a point where you actually complete the game and you get sent to the high school table and back to the title screen. Uh, and there is a final boss. Ah, right. Actually, guys, I've got a bit coming up here I need to explain very quickly. I'm either, I've got to navigate through a corridor coming up and with this double speed, I can't, I'm either going to hit the ceiling or I'm going to hit the floor. So I'm going to have to activate the... Um, little ship icon there where it turns me back to my normal speed. Now with the like the um, uh, boost speed um, pickup, 
the vertical scroll doesn't position very well because you kind of move in chunks. I've just picked one up and activated it again. If you notice, I kind of move in chunks around the screen when I've got the extra speed activated. And I think due to the vertical scroll that happens, like the the sync of like your vertical position gets a bit screwed up. So um, I was either gonna go into the ceiling there, or if I move just down once, I was gonna crash into the floor and I couldn't get in between the two because of how it moves my ship around the screen. So I had to activate that pickup to um, set me back to my normal slow speed so I could uh, orientate myself uh, vertically to get through that corridor. Does that make sense, guys? I hope it does. But this is a really annoying little glitch and bug in the game. And uh, will lead me to losing a life and not getting through that section of the game. Hmm. So watch out for that. Um, doesn't always happen. It usually seems to happen after a section where you've had like a vertical scrolling bit. So I need to prepare myself there. Thankfully though, we've got a laser weapon pickup back, which is good. Mm. So um, let's talk about the other versions of the game uh, just before we get to the mid-level boss. Um, well, the specky version. And of course the Amsterdam version is basically a port from this. Uh, there are some things that um, both versions do better or have differently. Um, oh, got through the lightning session there without a shield, that was very lucky. Um, Specky version has no music on the title screen, in-game or on the uh, high score table. Um, the Amsterdam version has that excellent music which makes, hey, makes me proud to have the CPC version. Um, and the specky sound effects are not as good and quite weedy. Um, but, however, on the flip side of all that, the specky version plays nearly twice the speed of the Amstrad version. It's nearly twice as fast. So, um, do you prefer the faster specky version? Or do you prefer the Amstrad version because it has the excellent music? Gameplay wise, the specky version is better. Uh, in terms of presentation, because you've got the awesome music, the Amstrad version may edit it a little. I don't know, it's, it's hard to say. Hard to call. Um, although, with the two versions, the rest of it appears to be identical um, with the layout of the, of, the le of the levels, the maps, and presentation, and all that kind of stuff. Ah, here's the mid-level boss, just in time. If you've got the laser weapon, and you've got the double speed activated, which I have, it's actually quite an easy boss. All he does is move up and down, fires three lasers rather slowly, which you should be able to easily avoid. Uh, but he does take quite a few hits to kill. Oh, there he goes, and he gets smaller and smaller. And that's the mid-level boss defeated, there we go. Right, uh, Commodore 64 version, hmm. Apparently, um, according to many people on the C64 Lemon site, it's, 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 the game is insanely hard. And looking at videos on YouTube, it looks to be the case. It's also a lot faster than the Specky and Amstrad versions. Level layout is a little bit different. Um, it still has the walls and columns to blast through and random sections that scroll vertically too. Uh, I think there's, there's more bosses that appear a lot earlier too. And the enemies are much harder and they come at you a lot quicker and faster. Um, as you'll see, the final boss uh, in the Amstrad version is the same as the Commodore 64 boss, which we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, weirdly though, the Commodore version has no jingles of music in the game at all. And he misses out on that awesome tune that the Amstrad has. And here we're, oh, we're hearing it now. But it does have the same uh, tune that you hear on the title screen, but it does sound a little bit better thanks to the uh, SID chip. And, and after we defeat the final boss in the Commodore 64 version, the ending is worse. Um, given the difficulty already of the game, the uh, completion screen tells you that you need to try a harder level. Which is like, no, sod off. I'm sure many Commodore 64 owners said at the time, if they actually managed to complete the bloody thing. The Amstrad version, the Swecky version, um, the Amstrad version is probably the easiest because it's, it, it moves the slowest. Um, you do get um, a few lives, 
I think it, I think this is fairly completable. Using the shield there to get past the lightning. Um, I do think this is completable. There are annoying sections. Um, <laughs> getting through that little tunnel we talked about earlier. There are a few sections with the lightning bolts and areas where there's a load of turrets. That makes things really, really difficult. But otherwise this is fairly completable and it's a fairly short game. You can clock it in under probably around 20 odd minutes. Hmm. Um, as for magazine reviews at the time, um, obviously we try. I always try to look for the Amsterdam Action magazine review. And it was reviewed, kind of, in issue 24, which is September 1987. Uh, Amsterdam Action actually reviews the Trio compilation as a whole, rather than the ind individual games in it. Um, they seem to kind of like Airwolf 2, weirdly. And they make note of the uh, great music in the game. But maybe they only liked it because it added to an existing compilation. Oh, actually, here's the first appearance of a satellite that fires a bouncing laser around the screen. It actually causes quite a lot of trouble and difficulty. Mm. And that laser stays on the screen bouncing around for quite some time. Watch out for it, because it can really catch you out. Um, yeah, as I said, the Amsterdam Action Magazine review, maybe they only liked it because it was added to a compilation, to an existing compilation. And if, re if they probably reviewed it on its own, it might be a different matter because the overall score they gave for the compilation of Trio was 71%. Um, it sounds like they probably would have given Airwolf 2 around about 70% from how they talked about it in the review. So there you go. As for my review, as we get to near the end of the game here, I've got the shield is active. Oh, we've got some like these like crushers causing us a bit of difficulty. We need some tight, tight skills here to navigate through that one. There we go. And we're very near the end of the game. And um, so my review score overall, I'm probably going to give this a 6 out of 10, guys. It's an okay horizontally scrolling shooter. We've seen m many like these on the Amstrad. Um, this is pretty much par for the course and average. Um... The monochrome graphics um, kind of don't impress me, although they are relatively detailed in points. Um, the movement of the ship isn't especially smooth; um, it's a little bit too slow. The frame rate could be could do have been better, uh, but really good sound effects and really excellent jingles of music um, kind of elevate it above the other averagey horizontally scrolling shooters on the Amstrad. But there we go. I think we should be coming up to the final boss in a second or minute. Oh, look at the uh, enemy at the, boss, at, the back, at the bottom there. It must be a homage to Frostbite, maybe. <laughs> if anyone renders Frostbite the game. <sighs> we need a shield here. Ooh! Just got past the light in there, that was lucky. Again, it's pot look, which when you have these lightning bolt sections, it's really just absolute luck you get through it and chance. Which I don't like. I don't like luck and chance in a game, or I'd rather it be on your own skill and merit. So the game gets marked down for things like that. Oh god, there's another satellite shooting a bouncing laser. It's gonna prove a problem for a while. Oh, here's the final boss! He appears quite early here. I'm using the shield, that's why I didn't get hit there. And it's another airwolf ship. <laughs> A helicopter. So they just reuse the same sprite. A bit naughty for a final boss. And there you go, he's defeated. And this is the ending. <laughs> Congratulations, Airwolf 2. You have successfully completed your mission. Please press a key. And that's all we get, guys. Uh, to be honest, given what we've seen in the game so far, I wasn't expecting much of an ending to the game. But we do get a very nice high score table with some really nice music. This actually, this, the high score table is very similar to the one in uh, Commando, actually.
with how you like uh, target and shoot letters and stuff. I wonder if um, the musician of Commando was the musician here. Might make sense. In fact, while I'm talking, I'm just going to go on the CPC Power website and look up <laughs> Commando and see if there's a musician um, listed for it, because I would assume it might well be the same guy. He was the musician in Commando. Rob Hubbard. Oh. Apparently Rob Hubbard did the music for Commando. Maybe he did the tunes here too. I can only speculate, guys. There you go. It could be Rob Hubbard. Normally, he'd get listed. But though this is a fairly simple tune for Rob Hubbard to be doing. He normally does a bit more complex tunes and stuff, This, especially this one on the title screen. But then again, the one in-game, kind of neoclassical, whatever, oh, I don't know, the tuning game just sound a bit Rob Rob Hubbardy. Mm. So there we go. Maybe it was just a quick one done by Rob at the time. We can only speculate. So there you go, guys. That was Airwolf 2 on the Amstrad CPC. Six out of ten from me. And uh, at least it's much better than the first game. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Thanks, guys. See you again soon. Goodbye. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please click a like below, leave a comment, and also subscribe if you haven't already. And over that way, there's another video for you to check out. Zypho, out.